and welcome to another episode of the Thoughtfully Made Fiber Vlogcast. My name is Amy Schur and I'm a knitting pattern designer and a spinner and weaver and sewist. Uh, so kind of a almost all around fiber artist. There's a few that I haven't learned and I don't think they're for me, but I do all of those other things. This is episode 28. I am recording here on February 24th, uh, 2023. Uh, let's see, it's been a while since I've had a little sit down episode. Uh, generally here on my channel you'll find mostly videos of me kind of puttering around doing my design things uh, here in the studio. So you're here in my little fiber arts studio where all my knitting patterns happen basically and recently I launched a new pattern. It is called the Building Blocks Cardi. It's here behind me and I'm also wearing one. It's an oversized and drop shoulder sweater with optional bust starts and kind of like modular instructions in that you like mix and match different parts. So the one I'm wearing is sleeveless with just cuffs on the upper arm and then the one behind me is with bust starts, pockets, and long sleeves. This one's also sized down so I'm kind of in between sizes so for this pattern I thought it would be fun to uh, show like the same body in different sizes, sizing up and down, since I'm conveniently right between sizes. I just remeasured my body recently because my body's going through a lot of like health fluctuations. But um, on the pattern, I said that my upper bust is 31 inches and at the time of photography it was but now it's more in like that 32 inch range and I think on my size chart the upper bust is 31 inches on the smallest size and then 34 on the upper size and since all my other measurements fall in the upper size if I were choosing sizes today I would very much choose that second size I would no longer size down like none of my measurements are like properly in that lower size anymore but at the time that I commissioned the sample it was so um so yeah it's been fun to put together that launch um, I also knit a sample I'll drop a little picture here where I cast on a uh, size 2 size B and then I did like kind of a line decreases towards the chest for size 1 <clears throat> You'll have to excuse me. I'm still recovering from my three months long respiratory thing. Um, so my voice is a little bit crackly still. Um, but basically I showed this cardigan a bunch of different ways. But the one I'm wearing now turned out to be like my surprising favorite. Um, just because I've never had a vest or tee cardigan before and I'm finding it incredibly versatile. Uh, it's really easy to layer over things and I just, yeah, I'm really enjoying it and hoping I'll get lots of wear out of it in the spring. Um, and yeah, if you'd like to check out this pattern, uh, it's size inclusive and also pretty shape inclusive in that I wrote a blog post all about that uh, A-line mod. I'll link it below as, as well as the pattern and anything else I talk about today. So I'll be right back so that we can talk a little bit more about what's coming next here at Amy Sure Makes. <laughs> Thank you. 
so now that we're getting into spring i'm thinking very seriously about all my spring releases so i wanted to show you some of the things i have here for that so the first spring release uh, coming in March will be the relaunch of the effervescent pullover. Actually, she's a little wonky. Hang on. She should be sitting like that. Thing down. And the effervescent pullover was commissioned by Pom Pom Magazine originally and it ended up on their cover. This is the first garment I've ever designed and the first garment sample that I've ever knit. And yeah, it's a throwback and really fun to bring it back. And as I was trying it on and putting it on the dress form and examining all the different things I did with it, now that I look at it, I'm really surprised by how lovely it is. Um, it almost doesn't feel like I designed it. I have like a good amount of like surprise and imposter syndrome for having designed this thing. And the sample itself, I knit up basically to the measurements of some of my favorite in the yoke fingering weight sweaters. And then it was graded by uh, my wonderful tech editor at the time, Jessica Schwab, who has moved on to exciting things. She owns an entire mill and they have like spinning fiber and yarn and all kinds of really cool things. I'll link her below, check that out. But she graded all the other sizes of this pattern and there so many people have knitted already and I love looking at all the finished objects for it. Um, it's been a joy to witness. Uh, the way that this pattern has taken off without me but now the sample and the rights to the pattern have returned here to me and uh the second week of march i will be relaunching it well maybe it's the third week like one of those second or third week of launch i will be relaunching this and let's see what is there to say oh we added busters so my colleague uh, Jennifer Parentini and I added bus starts. Um, I just ran out of time. I could have had bus starts on my own, but basically I was busy with another um, design project and I hired Jen to help me quickly write it up. So um, on sizes that need it, so I do not need bus starts much. Um, I could use like half an inch, but an inch would be too much, so I usually just skip it. But basically, the bust starts adds a wedge going back and forth in short rows over here to add a little bit length. So if you have like more boobs than this model has, then it takes, I'm so sorry, I'm like feeling up this dress form in front of you. Um, it lifts up the front because there's more fabric here and then it creates like a curve along the bottom hem here when there's more fat, like more to cover in the front. So bust starts will help Fill that space in so that the hem hangs straight and on an ultra crop you know this is a pretty crop garment her waist is like right here right here I don't know if you can see like right here so it's only a few inches past the waist um, so without bust starts this you know people who have more bust tissue will quickly find that the front will lift quite a lot and it becomes quite a different look so to get the grade and the look consistent we've added bust starts um, which wasn't standard to my design business <laughs> back when I designed this because it was my first design. <laughs> but um, with the Building Blocks drop and with the Building Blocks Cardi, we introduced bus starts um, as standard. So all of my patterns that can have bus starts will basically have them. That's kind of where we're going. Um, and then, you know, these days I do gravitate towards patterns that are gradable to be a little bit more shape inclusive so that as many of them as possible can have the darts. All right, so enough about darts. <laughs> enough about darts. Um, yeah, so the effervescent pullover is coming very soon. And this is knit in the Wandering Flock yarn. This is in their Merino Singles. And usually I don't go for singles and garments, but on this one I wanted that ethereal look and it ended up looking really beautiful. Like really well-defined stitches and the lace looks really lovely in that yarn. So let me push this over and show you. So the definition on that lace is so beautiful. Oh my God, I had my face. The definition on this lace is just so beautiful. I'm really happy with how it looks. Even, oh my 
my goodness, I didn't knit this last year. I was like even a year down the line, but I realized it's been more than a year. I knit it two years ago, two summers ago. So that's happening. If you'd like to be the first to see all my releases and get the exclusive discount codes for when things launch, um, I also have a link to my newsletter and like all my Ravelry web shops below. Everything is down there in the description. So that's coming. And then the pattern that's coming after that is this one. I think I showed it last time and I still haven't woven in all the ends. Uh, but it's blocked, so you know, it's close enough. This is called the Oolong Socks. This was actually originally the effervescent socks and then Pom Pom commissioned it as a sweater. Then it became this and it actually gained like a different leafy lace pattern because I wanted one that looks nicer in a round yoke. So um, I chose a different lace pattern for the pullover. And then since I knit a whole tank top out of this lace, I decided to rename this into the Oolong Socks. Um, I came up with the sock idea in April of 2021, long, long time ago. And I knit it, I knit up the first swatch while moving in May of 2021 and it's kind of been sitting in my archives unpublished since and i finally decided to come back with it since the pullover is coming back um, and this is the result it's a beautiful little lace leafy lace uh, kind of ankle like shorty sock not too short because i i don't like it when it sits like all the way down here on my ankle i like it kind of up here and then it has a mohair ruffle it's so pretty look at it the ruffle colors are beautiful. So this is an ode to the tea leaf that we make oolong from. Uh, but if you don't know, oolong and black tea and green tea and white tea are actually all the same plant. They're just different ways of processing and roasting it. So this is kind of my ode to that tea leaf. And then it still has a lovely little mohair ruffle. This is knit from the Wandering Block. Uh, the body is in their alpaca sock base. And then this is the same ruffle as this one. And this one is in the colorway pistachio cream. So both of these are coming at you very soon. Um, let me reset and then I'll come back to talk more about what I'm working on. So before we go on, I just want to say that I do know that I kind of slightly overcommitted in the number of patterns that I'm publishing this spring, um, or rather like the winter to spring season. So the first quarter of the year, I think I overcommitted and I've been launching a lot and launching is quite mentally tiring for me. And 
I think what's happened is that last year when I was very ill, I fell behind. So then everything in the winter got pushed back a little bit. And then now they're like butting up against spring releases. And then they're, just, they're, just, they're all just really closely packed in there. But then I also understand that if I release things too far out of season, people won't knit them. And then I, I still need to sell patterns to make a living. So um, this is my full-time job now. So we're just gonna try our best to get through the spring. Um, almost everything is ready. I just finished my last um, second quarter sample for the year and I'm quite excited. I bound it off my last night and it's drying, but I can show you a swatch. So I spoke last time, I think, about um, designing a shawl from Wool and Twine's Thrive Yarn and I'm so happy to report that the full larger shawl is done. This is the swatch. Tentatively named the meditative shawl because it's knit from the bottom up. So on the big shawl, you have like eight repeats of this lace at the very bottom after the garter border. And then it's um, inspired by meditation labyrinths. So if you are not familiar in some religious traditions, um, they have meditation labyrinths, which are built in a way where as you walk and, and through the path with your feet, and it's not always like hedges. Sometimes it's just like a path on the ground with like a little maze. So they have labyrinths where as you walk, you can breathe and think and center yourself and feel the ground beneath your feet and be present. And I find meditation modalities where there's movement and things to do to be a lot easier. Um, my brain is a little bit different. So like if you tell me to just sit down and think about nothing, I'll think about everything. Um, and see right now I'm getting distracted. I'm thinking like I highly relate to that movie Everything Everywhere all at once because that's how my brain often feels. And I know many people have spoken about how that movie feels very ADHD coded to them. And the creators have confirmed that um, I think one of the creators of that movie is also neurodivergent. And um, yeah, so that's how my brain works. But um, <laughs> to get back to the topic, um, the meditative shawl is inspired by that because I find lace knitting to be very meditative, similar in a very similar way to walking a meditation labyrinth in that there's something, there's like a pattern to it, there's a method to it. You knit the lace repeats with your hands and look at the stitches and read your stitches and focus on that one thing is very like zeroed in. And once I get into the rhythm of lace knitting, I find it really soothing and meditative and it calms me down and I can think about a lot of things. One, like my brain, my mind is wandering and thinking in a most relaxed way and I get some of my best thinking done while I am knitting lace. So I chose a lace pattern that looks to me like a labyrinth, like the twisty, windy situation. So it's a gently textured, not too harsh looking, not too defined lace pattern. Um, I just bound that off yesterday. It's blocking now. It's almost dry already because the unspun yarn dries so quick. And this particular blend was a little bit more like hardy feeling, um, like rustic feeling and less pliable while knitting. And then once blocked, it's like, look at that drape. It's very pliable and drapey in a way that the unblocked fabric wasn't. So while I was knitting the full shawl, it started to feel so stiff and I was like, oh no, what if this ends up being a cardboard? And then I had to come back to the swatch over and over again to remind myself that the blocked fabric is so different. And I don't usually have trouble with visualizing that when I'm in the middle of a project, but this one like messed with my mind. Uh, but we got there in the end and because it begins on uh, the wider base, as you knit, it gets narrower and narrower and many repeats later, you, re you reach the point of the shawl and your focus becomes like a narrowing path down to a single stitch. And I found that to be 
quite appropriate for the name and the inspiration and really fun to knit. So having knit it three times now, I originally swatched it in a different yarn and I swatched it here and I made the full shawl having done the point three times now. Oh my gosh, there's something in my eye. Oh. So having done it three times now, oh, I'm so sorry. This is, you know. So having done that point three times now, because I swatched it in a different yarn, then I swatched it in this yarn, and then I knit the full shawl, I find the ending part to be, like it feels really good. It feels like a razor focus into that point and very meditative, almost like you've reached like an epiphany at the end of a meditation. Um, and that's probably, that probably sounds like so pretentious, but, um, I really do find lace knitting incredibly soothing and focus creating it. So that's how I feel about that. And that's what it's going to be named, I think. So that's what I have going on for the remainder of spring. And in the spring, I hope to be knitting also another building block strap. And I thought I'd show you the colorway today. So this is uh, knitted in yarn in Galingra. I bought it sometime last year. It's this really cheerful, like almost like burnt orange, citrusy yellow, golden color. And oh, it doesn't smell so good. Um, I love that sheepy smell. And I've been wanting to knit up a lighter color of the building blocks cardi because it's very dark in here. And when I take pictures and videos in here, you often can't see the samples that I'm wearing. I am aware of this problem. I have lights in front of me, huge bright lights, and I can barely see, and it still looks like this. So I'm still like fighting with technology to try to make this lighting situation work. Um, and it feels like this spring, all I've done is buy lights because I bought so many um, grow lights for my plants and I was gonna plant them out today, but it turned out to be 20 degrees. Let's see what the temperature is now. Oh, it's 28 degrees, 30 degrees. We might be able to plant today, like maybe afternoon. But yeah, it was chilly this morning. So um, I did not get a chance to plant out all my current plants. I've got some, I'll insert some footage, but I've got some bok choy, I've got lettuce, I've got spinach, I've got another kind of bok choy, I've got Japanese turnips, radishes, beets, uh, onions, green onions, leeks, all kinds of things planted and I wanted to plant them out in the garden today. They're in like little module cells right now. I wanted to get them planted out so I can start more vegetables. I've got uh, Chinese celery, I've got um, jiu cai, the chives that I like to eat in my dumplings. I've got um, more bok choy, like different kinds of bok choy. I've got tatsoi, I've got arugula or rocket as it's known in some places. I've got all kinds of things that I still got a seed and I ran out of little seeding trays and I'm trying not to like overcommit on equipment but I do think I need another seeding tray but to add another seeding tray I need more lighting so I bought more lighting um my goal this year is to be able to produce all of our fresh veggies so not like the grains and definitely not all of our calorie kidneys there's no way I can do that on the land that I'm on my goal this year is to get off my CSA, even though I love my CSA in the region, um, which is a, like a little collaborative, co uh, it's a little um, collective uh, of supporting farms. So I get all my fresh veggies from there. Um, even though I love them, food costs have been so high. So this year I'm like really trying to work hard to grow more of our own food. Um, so I will be going to do that now and i thank you for watching i'm gonna put some footage throughout this episode of all the stuff that i've been doing and i do hope that you have enjoyed this episode and i will talk to you very soon